a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Euro Maiden Euro Maiden was a wave of demonstrations and civil unrest in Ukraine, which began on the night of 21 November 2013, with public protests in Maiden Nazali Zanosti and Kiev. The protests were sparked by the Ukrainian government's decision to suspend the signing of an association agreement with the European Union, instead choosing closer ties to Russia and the Eurasian Economic Union. The scope of the protests soon widened, with calls for the resignation of President Viktor Yanukovych and his government. The protests were fueled by the perception of widespread government corruption, abuse of power, and violation of human rights in Ukraine. Transparency International named President Yanukovych as the top example of corruption in the world. The situation escalated after the violent dispersal of protesters on 30 November, leading to many more protesters joining. The protests led to the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution. During the Euromaidan, there were protests and clashes with police throughout Ukraine, especially at the Maiden in Kiev which was occupied and barricaded by protesters. Dozens of communist monuments were also toppled or destroyed. Protests and clashes increased in January, after the Ukrainian parliament passed a group of anti-protest laws. Protesters occupied government buildings in many regions of Ukraine, and several activists were killed in clashes on Rashev's Coho Street in Kiev. The protests climaxed in mid-February. Riot police advanced towards Maiden and clashed with protesters, but did not fully occupy it. Police and activists fired live and rubber ammunition at multiple locations in Kiev. There was fierce fighting in Kiev on February 18-20, in which almost 100 activists and 17 police officers were killed. As a result of these events, Yanukovych was forced to make concessions to the opposition to end the bloodshed in Kiev and end the crisis. The Agreement on Settlement of Political Crisis in Ukraine was signed by Vitaly Klitschko, Arseniy Atsenyuk, Oleg Yarnabok. The signing was witnessed by the foreign ministers of Germany and Poland, Frank Walter Steinmeier, Radoslaw Sikorsky, respectively, and the director of the Continental Europe Department of the French Foreign Ministry, Eric Fournier. Vladimir Lukin, representing Russia, refused to sign the agreement. In late February 2014, Yanukovych and many other high government officials fled the country. Protesters gained control of the presidential administration and Yanukovych's private estate. Afterwards, the parliament removed Yanukovych from office, replaced the government with a pro-European one, and ordered that former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko be released from prison. Events in Kiev were soon followed by the Crimean crisis and pro-Russian unrest in eastern Ukraine. Despite the impeachment of Yanukovych, the installation of a new government, and the adoption of the Ukraine-EU Association Agreement's political provisions, the protests have sustained pressure on the government to reject Russian influence in Ukraine. Overview The demonstrations began on the night of 21 November 2013, when protests erupted in the capital, Kiev. After the Ukrainian government suspended preparations for signing the Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement with the European Union to seek closer economic relations with Russia, on 24 November 2013, clashes between protesters and police began. Protesters strived to break cordon. Police used tear gas and batons. Protesters also used tear gas and some firecrackers. After a few days of demonstrations an increasing number of university students joined the protests. The Euromaiden has been characterized as an event of major political symbolism for the European Union itself, particularly as the largest ever pro-European rally in history. The protests continued despite heavy police presence, regularly sub-freezing temperatures, and snow. Escalating violence from government forces in the early morning of 30 November caused the level of protests to rise, with 400,000-800,000 protesters, according to Russia's opposition politician Boris Nemtsov, demonstrating in Kiev on the weekends of 1 December and 8 December. In the preceding weeks, protest attendance had fluctuated from 50,000 to 200,000 during organized rallies. Violent riots took place the 1st of December and the 19th of January through the 25th of January in response to police brutality and government repression. Starting the 23rd of January, 
several western Ukrainian oblast governor buildings and regional councils were occupied in a revolt by Euromaidan activists. In the Russophone cities of Zaporizhia, Sumy, and Dnipropetrovsk, protesters also tried to take over their local government building, and were met with considerable force from both police and government supporters. According to journalist Lisha Bushak writing in the 18th of February 2014 issue of Newsweek magazine, Euromaidan had grown into something far bigger than just an angry response to the fallen through EU deal. It's now about ousting Yanukovych and his corrupt government, guiding Ukraine away from its 200-year-long, deeply intertwined and painful relationship with Russia, and standing up for basic human rights to protest, speak, and think freely and to act peacefully without the threat of punishment. A turning point came in late February, when enough members of the president's party fled or defected for the party to lose its majority in parliament, leaving the opposition large enough to form the necessary quorum. This allowed parliament to pass a series of laws that removed police from Kiev, cancelled anti-protest operations, restored the 2004 constitution, freed political detainees, and removed President Yanukovych from office. Yanukovych then fled to Ukraine's second-largest city of Kharkiv, refusing to recognize the parliament's decisions. The parliament assigned early elections for May 2014. Name history The term, Euromaiden, was initially used as a hashtag on Twitter. A Twitter account named Euromaiden was created on the first day of the protests. It soon became popular in the international media. The name is composed of two parts, Euro, is short for Europe and, Maiden, refers to Maiden Nezeliza Nostai, the main square of Kiev, where the protests are centered. Maiden is a Ukrainian word for, square, open space, ultimately from Arabic which means, square, or, field. During the protests the word, Maiden, has come to mean the act of revolution and overturning of a government. The term, Ukrainian Spring, is sometimes used, echoing the term Arab Spring. Initial Causes On 30 March 2012 the European Union and Ukraine initiated an association agreement. However, the EU leaders later stated that the agreement would not be ratified unless Ukraine addressed concerns over a stark deterioration of democracy and the rule of law, including the imprisonment of Yulia Tymoshenko and Yuri Lutsenko in 2011 and 2012. In the months leading up to the protests Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych urged the parliament to adopt laws so that Ukraine would meet the EU's criteria. On 25 September 2013 Chairman of the Verhofner Rada Volodymyr Ibak stated he was sure that his parliament would pass all the laws needed to fit the EU criteria for the association agreement since, except for the Communist Party of Ukraine. The Verhofner Rada has united around these bills. According to Pavla Klimkin, one of the Ukrainian negotiators of the association agreement. Initially, the Russians simply did not believe could come true. They didn't believe in our ability to negotiate a good agreement, and didn't believe in our commitment to implement a good agreement. In mid-August 2013 Russia changed its customs regulations on imports from Ukraine such that on 14 August 2013, the Russian Customs Service stopped all goods coming from Ukraine and prompted politicians and sources to view the move as the start of a trade war against Ukraine to prevent Ukraine from signing a trade agreement with the European Union. Ukrainian Industrial Policy Minister Mykhailo Kurilenko stated on 18 December 2013 that, because of this Ukraine's exports had dropped by $1.4 billion. The State Statistics Service of Ukraine reported in November 2013 that in comparison with the same months of 2012, industrial production in Ukraine in October 2013 had fallen by 4.9 percent, in September 2013 by 5.6 percent, and in August 2013 by 5.4 percent. On 21 November 2013 a Ukrainian government decree suspended preparations for signing of the association agreement. The reason given was that the previous months Ukraine had experienced a drop in industrial production and our relations with cis countries. The government also assured, Ukraine will resume preparing the agreement when the drop in industrial production and our relations with cis countries are compensated by the European market. According to Ukrainian Prime Minister Mykola Azarov, the extremely harsh conditions 
of an IMF loan, which included big budget cuts and a 40% increase in gas bills, had been the last argument in favor of the Ukrainian government's decision to suspend preparations for signing the association agreement. On 7 December 2013 the IMF clarified that it was not insisting on a single-stage increase in natural gas tariffs in Ukraine by 40 percent, but recommended that they be gradually raised to an economically justified level while compensating the poorest segments of the population for the losses from such an increase by strengthening targeted social assistance. The same day IMF resident representative in Ukraine Jerome Vacher stated that this particular IMF loan is worth US 4 billion US dollars and that it would be linked with policy which would remove disproportions and stimulate growth. Wow. President Yanukovych attended the 28th the 29th of November 2013 EU summit in Vilnius but the association agreement was not signed. Both Yanukovych and high-level EU officials signaled that they wanted to sign the association agreement at a later date. In an interview with Lally Weymouth, Ukrainian billionaire businessman and opposition leader Petro Poroshenko said, From the beginning, I was one of the organizers of the Maiden. My television channel, Channel 5, played a tremendously important role. On the 11th of December, when we had U.S. Assistant Secretary of State, Victoria Newland and EU diplomat Catherine Ashton in Kiev. During the night they started to storm the Maiden. On December 11, 2013 the Prime Minister, Mykola Azarov, said he had asked for 20 billion euros in loans and aid to offset the cost of the EU deal. The EU was willing to offer 610 million euros in loans. However Russia was willing to offer 15 billion US in loans. Russia also offered Ukraine cheaper gas prices. As a condition for the loans, the EU required major changes to the regulations and laws in Ukraine. Russia did not. Public opinion about Euro Maiden According to December 2013 polls between 45% and 50% of Ukrainians supported Euro Maiden, while between 42% and 50% opposed it. The biggest support for the protest can be found in Kiev in western Ukraine. Among Euromaidan protesters, 55% were from the west of the country, with 24% from central Ukraine and 21% from the east. In a poll taken on 7-8 of December, 73% of protesters had committed to continue protesting in Kiev as long as needed until their demands were fulfilled. This number had increased to 82% as of 3 February 2014. Polls also showed that the nation was divided in age, while a majority of young people were pro-EU. Older generations more often preferred the customs union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia. More than 41% of protesters were ready to take part in the seizure of administrative buildings as of February, compared to 13 and 19% during polls on 10 and 20 December 2013. At the same time, more than 50% were ready to take part in the creation of independent military units, compared to 15 and 21%. During the past studies, respectively, according to a January poll, 45% of Ukrainians supported the protests and 48% of Ukrainians disapproved of Euromaidan. In a March poll, 57% of Ukrainians said they supported the Euromaidan protests. A study conducted at Harvard University examining public opinion in regular and social media found that 74% of Russian speakers in Ukraine supported the Euromaidan movement, and a quarter opposed. Public opinion about joining the EU According to an August 2013 study by a Donetsk company, Research and Branding Group, 49% of Ukrainians supported signing the association agreement, while 31% opposed it and the rest had not decided yet. However, in a December poll by the same company, only 30% claimed that terms of the association agreement would be beneficial for the Ukrainian economy, while 39% said they were unfavorable for Ukraine. In the same poll, only 30% said the opposition would be able to stabilize the society and govern the country well, if coming to power. 
while 37% disagreed. Authors of the GFK Ukraine poll conducted to the 15th of October 2013 claim that 45% of respondents believed Ukraine should sign an association agreement with the EU, whereas only 14% favored joining the customs union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia and 15% preferred non-alignment. Full text of the EU-related question asked by GFK reads, should Ukraine sign the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement, and, in the future, become an EU member? Another poll conducted in November by Afak Ukraine for DW Trends showed 58% of Ukrainians supporting the country's entry into the European Union. On the other hand, a November 2013 poll by Kiev International Institute of Sociology showed 39% supporting the country's entry into the European Union and 37% supporting Ukraine's accession to the Customs Union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia. In December 2013, then Prime Minister of Ukraine Mykola Azrov refuted the pro-EU poll numbers claiming that many polls posed questions about Ukraine joining the EU and that Ukraine had never been invited to join the Union, but only to sign the Association Agreement. Comparison with the Orange Revolution The pro-European Union protests are Ukraine's largest since the Orange Revolution of 2004, which saw Yanukovych forced to resign as Prime Minister, over allegations of voting irregularities. Although comparing the 2013 events in the same east-west vector as 2004, with Ukraine remaining a key geopolitical prize in Eastern Europe, for Russia and the EU. The Moscow Times noted that Yanukovych's government was in a significantly stronger position following his election in 2010. The Financial Times said the 2013 protests were largely spontaneous, sparked by social media, and have caught Ukraine's political opposition unprepared, compared to their well-organized predecessors. The hashtag Euromaiden emerged immediately on the first meeting of the protests and was highly useful as a communication instrument for protesters. Vitaly Klitschko wrote in a tweet, Friends, all those who came to Maidan, Independence Square, well done. Who has not done it yet join us now. The protest hashtag also gained traction on the Vkontakt social media network, and Klitschko tweeted a link to a speech he made on the square saying that once the protest was 100,000 strong, will go for Yanukovych, referring to President Viktor Yanukovych. In an interview, opposition leader Yuri Lutsenko, when asked if the current opposition was weaker than it was in 2004, argued that the opposition was stronger because the stakes were higher. I asked each of the opposition leaders, do you realize that this is not a protest? It is a revolution. We have two roads we go to prison or we win. Paul Robert Magassi illustrated the effect of the Orange Revolution on Euro Maiden, saying, Was the Orange Revolution a genuine revolution? Yes it was. And we see the effects today. The revolution wasn't a revolution of the streets, or a revolution of elections. It was a revolution of the minds of people, in the sense that for the first time in a long time, Ukrainians and people living in territorial Ukraine saw the opportunity to protest and change their situation. This was a profound change in the character of the population of the former Soviet Union. Lviv-based historian Yaroslav Ritzak also remarked on the generational shift. This is a revolution of the generation that we call the contemporaries of Ukraine's independence. It is more similar to the Occupy Wall Street protests or those in Istanbul demonstrations. It's a revolution of young people who are very educated, people who are active in social media, who are mobile and 90% of whom have university degrees, but who don't have futures. According to Hidzak, young Ukrainians resemble young Italians, Czech, Poles, or Germans more than they resemble Ukrainians who are 50 and older. This generation has a stronger desire for European integration and fewer regional divides than their seniors. In a Kiev International Institute of Sociology poll taken in September, joining the European Union was mostly supported by young Ukrainians, higher than the national average of 43.2% support. A November 2013 poll by the same institute found the same result with 70.8% aged 18 to 29 wanting to join the European Union while 39.7% was the national average of support. An opinion poll by GFK conducted to 15 October found that among respondents aged 16-29 with a position on integration, 
73% favoured signing an association agreement with the EU, while only 45% of those over the age of 45 favoured association. The lowest support for European integration was among people with incomplete secondary and higher education. Escalation to violence The movement started peacefully, but later protesters felt justified in using violence after the government's crackdown on protesters which happened during the night of 30 November 2013. The Associated Press said on 19 February, the latest bout of street violence began Tuesday when protesters attacked police lines and set fires outside Parliament, accusing Yanukovych of ignoring their demands to enact constitutional reforms that would limit the president's power, a key opposition demand. Parliament, dominated by his supporters, was stalling on taking up a constitutional reform to limit presidential powers. Police responded by attacking the protest camp. Armed with water cannons, stun grenades and rubber bullets, police dismantled some barricades, but the protesters held their ground through the night, encircling the protest camp with new burning barricades of tires, furniture and debris. In the early stages of Euromaidan, there was discussion about whether the Euromaidan movement constituted a revolution or a staged color revolution by outside forces. At the time many protest leaders had already used this term frequently when addressing the public. Diana Bock called in an official the 2nd of December press release for police officers and members of the military to defect to the Ukrainian revolution. In a Skype interview with media analyst Andrei Holovatij, Vitaly Portnikov, council member of the Maidan National Alliance, and president, and editor-in-chief of the Ukrainian television channel TVI, stated, Euro Maiden is a revolution and revolutions can drag on for years, and that, what is happening in Ukraine goes much deeper. It is changing the national fabric of Ukraine. Media outlets in the region dubbed the movement, Euro Revolution. On 10 December Yanukovych said, calls for a revolution pose a threat to national security. Former Georgian President Mikhail Saakashvili has described the movement as the first geopolitical revolution of the 21st century. Political expert Anders Aslant commented on this aspect. Revolutionary times have their own logic that is very different from the logic of ordinary politics, as writers from Alexis de Tocqueville to Crane Brinton have taught. The first thing to understand about Ukraine today is that it has entered a revolutionary stage. Like it or not, we had better deal with the new environment rationally. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?